Hello everybody and welcome back to Jake's RC Stuff and um, we are technically carrying on with the White Shark build but um, a little bit of sort of IT support even. Um, when you download your um, INF configurator you end up with a folder like this in your downloads and when you double click it, uh, extract tool, blah blah do it again, I have configurator. There you are. It doesn't install, which can be a problem because if you leave that in your downloads, you can accidentally clear out your downloads and delete it. Same on the desktop. I'm someone who it doesn't really work out on this computer because it's a bit more of a computer. I don't use this often. Um, but I try and keep stuff off of the desktop where possible. So I'm going to show you how you can install it, basically. So what you need to do, I'm going to keep that window open just to make life easier. If you go to OSC, Program files. And if you look in here, I have a folder called iNav Configurator. Now you need to make that folder, you can just new folder, um, continue on that and give it a name like you normally would. And then inside iNav Configurator, um, this is the old 3.0 version. And you see, I've also got the impulse driver fixer in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to 3.0. You won't have to do this, obviously, because you won't have one, but just in case you follow this tutorial before, there we are. So that's all for 3.0. Um, what's good with that, of course, is it means that you can keep different versions for different planes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue, and I'm going to call this 4.0, 4.0, iNavConfigurator. Okay, and then we're going to copy everything from this folder into here. And do this for all current items. Continue, because basically all an installer does um, is copy and paste things into the programs folder. Um, now that's great. Now one thing that you may notice, if I click the start button and I go to iNav, you can see I have... 3.0 INF, so that's for all the players that are on 3.0, not 4.0. But 4.0 isn't there. So how do you do it? Well, what you need to do is find a program that you have installed. Um, so not a Windows program, but a program that you've installed. So if I, for example, go to DaVinci Resolve, go to More, Open File Location. Now, as you can see, this location, Start Menu, Programs, Black Magic Design, blah, 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 blah. Now, what you need to do is you need to go back to Programs, and these are folders. So if, for example, I go into the Start Menu, you see, for example, I have this Black Magic Design here. That Black Magic Design is there. So if you make a new folder, call it iNav. Um, I've already got one. Right, apologies for that. So here we are. We have... Um, on the start menu, programs, INAV. And we have 3.0, the impulse driver, and we want to add the 4.0. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the 4.0 one that is installed in program file, so this one. And all we're going to do is right click that, send to desktop, create shortcut. If we go back to the desktop, you'll see we have of config dash shortcut now if you want to we can of course rename it to get rid of shortcut because you know it's a shortcut because that's what we did um, I'm also going to put 4.0 at the beginning so that gives you a shortcut on the desktop so if you want to keep it there you can do um, if you want to keep it you copy if you want to get rid of it you cut so that's control C for copy control X for cut then go back to the start menu programs I have we paste it there and there we are we have 3.0 configurator the 4.0 configurator and impulse RC driver fixer which we need sometimes for different things um, I wonder if this shortcut's not going to work because we changed the file name but I think it'll be fine yeah it's working okay that's the old I know configurator so now if we go into the start menu and we search for iNav, you can see we have 4.0 and 3.0. And if we do it the old fashioned way, 
and we scroll for I now to new as well because we realize something's changed 3.0, 4.0, and the impulse RC drive. So we could choose whichever one we want. I want four. So there we are. That's like a IT tip time, if you like. And we can now have a look at trying to get um, INAV flashed on two. LF765, whatever it is. I've tried to plug it in and it has lights, but obviously we now need to try plugging it. So uh, bear me a moment. I'm using the cable from my radio master today because USB-C, not me. Um, or micro USB. So, um, bear me a moment and we'll try getting that done. Okay, so to flash, we're going to go to the firmware flasher. We're going to tie boards, which is a Matek F765SE, is what we're looking for. There we are. Firmware 4.1, full chip erase, load firmware online, so that basically just downloads it. And then, on the little daughter board that's of course plugged in, I'm going to have the beeper set to off just so it doesn't deafen you. We're going to press and hold that button in, connect. Yep, and then we're going to click flash firmware and away it goes. So simple as that just to get the firmware on here. Didn't have to do the impulse drive fix or anything. Excellent. And now it's flashed. Just click connect. And there we are, it works. Uh, airplane with a tail. Setting the default settings to it. And there we are, it works. Excellent. So, um, We'll continue that in a bit. I just want to make sure that this worked before we went any further. So um, we'll leave the laptop for now and we'll go back to um, doing the wiring in the wings, I think. Okay, so stepping away from the computer, um, we're going to look at actually getting stuff connected to this flight controller. To begin with, the super simple ones, the elevator and rudder servos, which you can see the ports of the um, Connectors there you need to connect to these line of connectors across the back. So I've got some 12 inch server leads here. Uh, they are a bit big, but I'd rather them be slightly too big than too short because I don't want it pulling on this board. So, super simple connect them up like that, and then I've got these plastic servo locks here to uh, keep them attached. So I don't know I'm going to film this, so I'll just do it to you and show you the finished result. All right, this is the finished article. Yes, the wires are a bit longer than even I thought, uh, but they were such a pain to get connected. They're not being removed. It'll stay like this. I'll do some cable tidying. It's fine. Um, so next, possibly going into some of the harder stuff. We've got the wings to do. We've also got a GPS that's going to sit up here. So I need to decide what to do next and go from there. Okay, so we're going to be installing the GPS. I'm going to be using one of these. The reason why, I'm not going to be using the compass bit, but the reason why I'm using these is because um, they're quite hard to like fit into planes, and I have quite a few of them. Uh, like the mini stuff, it's too big to fit into. And also trying to bury it in a wing is a nightmare because it's round. You might be able to cut off bits of the round, but I don't want to risk it. Uh, but this actually looks quite professional so um first thing first with these we need to take the back off and find out what color wires do what um then we can get them soldered up to some plugs so uh let me get it taken apart and we'll have a look Okay, so here's a close-up for what's inside this GPS unit, and while it's technically upside down, these bits of writing here tells you what each wire does, and you can sort of pull the wires out to see them. So VCC, positive, ground, negative, uh, and then TX and RX, which is the yellow and orange wire for the GPS, and then SCL and SDA is to do with the compass, which is black and green. And if we look at the connector on the other end, so we completely get rid of that connector, and then we just need to adapt that connector into what I'm probably going to do as two different um, servo connections. Let's have a look on the Matek website and see um, how it actually wires up to the flight controller. So as per the Matek manual, it can technically go on any port, but the port it has, has us using 
Oh, these middle ones here. Let me try and autofocus. Let's grab some autofocus. So yeah, it's just the middle ones across there. Oh, come on. Oh. So it is this middle row here. One, black, red, and those two pins are going to be our TX and RX. So what I'm going to use, I've got these thin wired because they're not going to be taking much power. Um, male to male at leads. I'm going to cut them in half and butcher them a little bit. Um, so we have the correct connection that we need. Okay, so I've got rid of that black and green connector. The green, the black's cut very short, the green's a little bit longer. That's a bit of a tip for you. You're just going to cut stuff up, do it at slightly different lengths and there's less chance of them shorting out. And then I've just got these four wires here. I took that male to male cable, like that one, cut it in half, and then just cut the white wire off of this one. So this will be for power. It does have a little nick in it, but no, that looks all right. That looks fine. Um, hmm. Hmm. He says. Okay, I'm going to replace that, that red wire with this red wire from the other side. Um, so just cut the white off, and as you can see, you accidentally nicked the red. And then I made this one up, so I cut off one of the extra ports. See, the lights it's been nipped. Uh, and black and white there. So I'll replace the red, and then red and black will be red and black, and then orange and yellow don't really matter how they solder upon here. Because um, the TX and RX doesn't matter too much. If it doesn't work, you just flip the cable around, it's fine. Red and black obviously does matter, otherwise you make this go bang. Uh, I could also cut this wire a little bit shorter. The reason I'm not doing it is it does seem to have some sort of shielding in the wire. So I'm going to keep that as is. Try to deal with shielding sometimes could be a nightmare. Um, and obviously we don't want any issues with our GPS. It's quite important, hence the fact I'm going to replace this red wire. So I'll get that replaced. We'll get the soldering iron on. We'll get them soldered up. Back shortly. Right, so I've decided for today I'm going to stop. Um, whether it's the end of the video or not, I don't know. I may come down and do... Um, some more soldering to this or glue magnets in or, or do something depending on the length of the video I'll start editing it upstairs and see how long it is um, but I have been to it's called the Pie Hut I think it's called yeah the Pie Hut is in Raspberry Pi so P.I. Hut UK company and they actually sell 0.1 inch pitch 4 pin jumper cable 20 centimeters long um, 80p each I bought 4 of them does that sound right um, first last shipping should be here tomorrow, uh, but that is four pins and wire, male to male, so I can just cut it in half like I did with them, but it's actually four pins, so it'll just, hopefully, because um, servo leads are 0.1 inch pitch, should just go on. Um, so, I will try and remember to link them in the description, if I haven't, please feel free to share it with me, um, but uh, even if this isn't the end of the video, you can like and subscribe and leave comments and stuff, um, so I'll see you another time. Um, goodbye for now, possibly for this episode. I don't know. Bye-bye.